But anyways, welcome to Bridge Review. This is where I would be doing an experimental series on reviewing the bridges based on their bridges being historically and then also the longevity of the bridge, uh, the uniqueness of the bridge. Um, and I for and you know, what goes into making a bridge, I mean, how much it costs to make the bridge, and the facts about the bridge. But anyways, let's go and get an hour straight to it. First, bridge. Okay, and here we are at the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. This bridge was originally a part of the state route 17 and which would make the bridge now a part of the interstate 580 which i don't know where that's at but if i do my research correctly it's somewhere around california so that means california gets all the cool stuff they get the freaking tech stuff and then now they get bridges <laughs> which is totally awesome nonetheless Okay, upon its opening, the Richmond San Rafael Bridge was the last bridge across the San Francisco Bay to replace a previous ferry ferry service, leaving the Benicia Martinez ferry across the Carquinez Strait as the only remaining auto ferry in the Bay Area. It would be replaced by a bridge in 1962. Jeez, bridges can replace ferries. Oh man, nothing can ever replace ferries. Like, you're out there in the water. Like, you're near the water. You're looking at that beautiful bridge from, from a downward perspective. Just, man, that must have been such an awesome view. And then also you would get like an awesome view from right there on, on the bridge itself. Man. Which is totally awesome. Okay, then now it says... I'm sorry if I'm saying it says because I am indeed uh, reading from a research notepad that I put up in order for me to make sure that I do not get my facts mixed up or get commentary in the middle of my ideas. Well, you all get what I mean. Okay, but now then... $62 million was estimated in the 1950s. I can only assume that it's a lot of money back then, which is still a lot of money today. Man, $62 million. The things I could definitely buy with that. New car. Uh, new house. Um, my new ego. <laughs> Man, a $62 million ego. But anyways... It is equivalent to 571,400,000 in the year 2018, which I can only suspect that in the year 2019 or in 2020, that is going to be <clears throat> that's going to be the equivalent of 600 million dollars. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. The construction of the bridge started in March 1953, and it was opened in ninth. It was opened in September 1st, 1956, which means that by today's standards, that would be considered a 63-year-old bridge, which is. I'm not even that old. But still, it's it's awesome to see how bridges can last through the passage of time. Man, they don't build them like they used to. <laughs> and this, the Richmond San Rafael Bridge is also known as the John F. McCor John F. McCarthy Memorial Bridge. 
Okay, so I think that has some historical references because I think John F. McCarthy is a senator. I'm not exactly sure. I gotta do some more research on him. Okay, so now that on to the review score of the bridge. Okay, and oh yes, before we decide to go over to the, um, the, um, the review score of the bridge, I forgot to do the uniqueness of the bridge. And that is that the uniqueness of the bridge is that it is like a freaking snake. And the best of all, I did do some research on the bridge and it's like this. <laughs> oh man, such a ride would that be? Just go up and then you go ah <laughs> and then you go down and then you go up and then ah <laughs> <laughs> oh man, a little roller coaster of a ride back. Oh, California, you get you get this awesome bridge. <laughs> okay, and also for a fact is that I did do some research on this bridge, and it seems is that a lot of people back then did not like the look of this bridge. Which I'm not exactly sure why because it's such an awesome looking bridge But I guess Maybe it's just like in today's standards with video games where people say oh the graphics are great <laughs> I don't know. That's just a joke everyone But man, that is an awesome that is definitely an awesome bridge Okay and now that for the review score of the bridge. Okay, there's definitely, um, I think innovation that was, that was done because we think, because it looks like they used to be, people used to go by ferry to go from place, I mean, from place to place. But now that there's a bridge there, which means is that there was an innovation back then, I think. And so, okay, there's definitely more expensive bridges in this, but the uniqueness, it takes that apart. So, I am going to have to give this one, I'm going to have to give this one possibly a 6 out of 10. Because, because I don't know much about the bridge and also is that let's see what was I thinking okay uh, the cost of the bridge might not be compared to other expensive bridges um, and two they definitely have some signi historical significance because of John F. McCarthy and three, I guess it's from the time that the bridge was constructed and from the time that it was completed. So, I'm definitely going to have to give this one a 6 out of 10. And if my review score is wrong to some of you, please let me know down in the comment section. There must, there might have been something I may have missed. Next, bridge. Okay, and here we are at... The Tacoma Narrows Bridge. This bridge was const starting construction in the year 1938 in the month of September, which would definitely make this bridge 81 years old. Okay, that's definitely nearly a hundred year old bridge. Well, if I were to estimate it to the next hundred, but still, 81 year old bridge. Holy crap! Okay. It, which means that this bridge was completed in 1940, but in the, in the month of November 7th, this bridge was collapsed because of its main span collapse from 42 mile an hour winds, which I can only suspect that it was not structurally sound for wind resistance. 
I don't know what the physics and math when it comes to that, but I can only assume is that it's the bridge is like a solid object. There, there's no way for wind to pass through, so the wind is like a freaking battering ram when it comes to when it comes to that bridge. That the bridge, then that would make the bridge all wavy and stuff, and that would make the bridge collapse. I can only assume it's that. I don't know for a fact. I am not a science person or an engineer. I'm just fascinated by bridges. <laughs> All right. And th that collapse of that bridge was the biggest and most famous non-fatal engineering disaster in U.S. history at the time of its construction and of its destruction. Which I can only suspect is that it was a close call, like, no one died. I, I, I've seen a lot of documentaries on engineering disasters. So I can only assume that this one over here is like, a lot of close calls. <laughs> Jeez, what a dangerous bridge that was back then. Which I can only suspect, judging by this picture here of the modern day Tacoma, Bri Tacoma Narrows Bridge. I can only suspect is that this bridge was once one bridge but then they had to make another bridge over there so yeah okay I gotta do some more research on this bridge but I think I am missing the date of the time and place that they did do this bridge over here you know to the left okay Okay, and now then, following the collapse of the bridge, the U.S. involvement in World War II delayed plans to replace the bridge. The portion of the bridge still standing after the collapse, including the towers and cables, were dismantled and sold as scrap metal. Which I can only assume that means that the bridge was technically recycled for, for the tanks, for the um, for the shells for the planes that kind of thing so technically it was like one of those MacGyver instances of recycling materials in order to build something from it <laughs> man that's awesome okay and using the bridges tower pedestals and cable anchorages the portion of the bridge Okay, on the portion of the bridge that fell into the water now serves as an artificial reef. Um, an artificial reef, I can only suspect is that if I remember correctly from the Great Coral Reef, that that reefs is normally used to to help with feeding the feeding the um the sea life. Ocean life, I'm not exactly sure. But please tell me down in the comment section below what an artificial reef is. And that bridge was the third longest suspension bridge in the world in terms of main span length behind the Golden Gate Bridge and the Washington Br George Washington Bridge. Jeez! This bridge is totally awesome, but... I'm possibly going to put this, but if I were to review this bridge from a review score, I'm going to have to put this one as an 8 out of 10, because one, of uh, how it helped out with innovating future bridges, and two, historical significance in World War II, and three, from, from the from being the, the biggest and most famous non-fatal engineering disaster, which means there were so many close calls at that time, which was insane. And then, of course, about it being the third longest suspension bridge in the world in terms of main span length, which means it must have set a world record somewhere along the line. Um, what's next? 
Okay, and also the uniqueness of the bridge is is the way that it looks. And yeah, the uniqueness of the bridge is like it's actually two bridges made by different times. So that's definitely the uniqueness of the bridge. So I'm definitely going to give it an 8 out of 10. And if, once again, if I am wrong, if my review scores are wrong, uh, please let me know down in the comment section below and we'll have a conversation about that. And then I'll go ahead and adjust how I review things for the next bridge uh, review if you all want me to do so. Alright. Next bridge. Okay, according to my research, there's actually five of these bridges. So I really wasn't sure which one to review first. So I decided to go for the one that I did some research on for 1984 to present day, which would make that bridge a 35 year old bridge. And and this is going to be a very fun one because one of the facts to me is pretty darn funny and you all would see why in my opinion it's pretty darn funny okay first fact is that the bridge is listed in the register of historic places in Muskingum County Ohio I'm hoping I'm saying that right if someone from Muskingum County is here. I'm sorry. I may, must have said that name wrong. I do apologize for that. <laughs> the Zanesville, Ohio's fifth Y bridge is from 1984 to present, which would make it a 35 year old bridge, which is pretty darn awesome. Not compared to the uh, the Tacoma's narrow bridge, which is an 81 year old bridge. Okay, and now here comes a funny fact, <laughs> and it says here, Democratic authorities announced the head of ODOT, which I can only suspect is the Ohio Department of Transportation, would preside at the Friday ceremony because the governor, Richard Celeste, had a previous commitment. The Republicans could not permit their rivals to be the first to dedicate the bridge. On Friday morning, October 5th, 1984, the, uh, an unannounced parade led by former Governor James Rhodes marched down Main Street. They cut the first ribbon. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure maybe you all would know what I'm talking about, but it's like... It's like some kind of political stunt. We must not let the Democrats commence the... Must not let the Democrats commence that bridge. <laughs> we must stop them at any cost. <laughs> and the former governor just went over there to do a little marching parade down Main Street. And they cut the first ribbon. <laughs> oh man. It, it must have been like, we must not let the Democrats hog all the glory of this day. <laughs> uh, I guess things, even back then, would be considered a political stunt. <laughs> um, if anyone out there may find that funny, or maybe not find that not funny, I am sorry, but to me, having a political stunt in the middle of a bridge opening ceremony... <laughs> It's a little, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh man. And then the Ohio Department of Transportation then found its effective expansion joints and the final ceremony heralding the actual opening of the bridge was held in November 9th, 1984, which I can only suspect is that it was supposed to be October 5th when it was supposed to be open but it had to be extended for a month in order to make sure that the final stuff is fine before it opened up 
Like, which would definitely make sense. I love that when people make precautions, especially on bridges. Okay, and for this one, I'm going to have to rate this one. A, I'm going to have to rate this one a 7 because of the uniqueness of the bridge. Um, and also, at the fact is that there's actually five wide bridges. Which I can only suspect is that first wide bridge was built, and then it was torn down and built another bridge. Then it was torn down and built another bridge, and it was torn down. I'm not exactly sure. So there's actually five Y bridges. Um, and then also at the fact of that being a political stunt for the opening of the bridge. Um, and also at the fact of taking a, um, a precaution to make sure the bridge is being opened without any accidents and stuff like that. So yeah, once again, if my review score is wrong or the way I review things is wrong, this is indeed an experimental video. So if you all can go ahead and help me out on how you all want me to review bridges, um, please let me know down in the comment section. But well, anyways everybody, this is Mario Oblivion 13 signing off. And you all have a good day now. Take care of yourselves everybody. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna go on the Assassin's Creed there. Okay, we might need to check out another room. Duct tape. Nice! Gotta be MacGyver. Okay. There's that. Okay, we got some nails. Thank you very much. Okay, any alcohol in the fridge? Okay, it's locked. Okay.